Now this is our repair job. There's a crack right here and the crack goes that direction. So it's got a dog leg. So we're going to set our router up to cut along this crack and turn and cut along that crack. And then we'll have to do our best to cut our piece of Corian to fit right into the crack, glue it in and sand it. This is the jig I've set up for the router. It has this small box, this small area that the router can move back and forth and it can't move side to side. With this jig, we can look in and see the crack and also know exactly where the router is going to cut. Also, we can move the jig and put the router bit in the channel where it needs to pivot so that we're having an exacting cut. Now this is our cardboard contraption to keep our shavings from the router from flying all over. Take the time to lay out what you plan to do. Mark the cabinet. Make sure you're totally organized before you cut. But also, erase all of your lines and clean up any kind of mess you have so that when you route, you'll have a nice clean edge and won't have any graphite or anything on it. There was a hole drilled at the end of the crack probably a year ago to prevent the crack from spreading further. So conveniently, we had a plug cutter This particular router has a gauge and a knob. So you can turn the knob and it will lower the, you can release the lock. You can turn the knob and it'll raise and lower the bit so that it will cut a certain distance. So I can use this to make an exacting dado in my cabinet so that this piece of Corian fits in there just like that. And I won't wobble all over. So when you set your jig on the place to be repaired, look through the hole and you can see how to adjust the jig so that you cut in the right spot. Ready? Mm-hmm. After you clean up, Move your jig and set the router bit in the hole you've just cut at the very end where you need to pivot. After reclamping, then cut your second leg. So you can see how the jig helps you make a real nice intersection between the two cuts. So I am making progress on this Corian job. I've got the receiving hole for our piece of Corian patch. This is the patch which is from a cutting board that the original installers left. I've got a plug from the end of the leftover piece of Corian. And it fits pretty much precisely in the hole, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Just cut it so that it's not so big it doesn't fit. Unfortunately, I have this little round end I have to make, but things could be worse. This is cut half as deep as the Corian is thick. And it's a nice cut. I would say that the jig that I made worked pretty well. It could have been slightly better perhaps, but the cut itself is just fine.
we used a hole cutter for glass to cut the end of our replacement piece. The crack, of course, runs through the corner, so it'll take some special efforts. I'll perhaps try some super glue and then lightly sand it with something like 400 grit. And we'll see how it goes. The little pieces of corian are easy to sand. So I'm using 100 grit sandpaper on a piece of glass because it's flat. And I can sand it down so it fits perfectly into the hole. And then I can also sand that finished side down a little bit so that we won't have to sand a great deal to make it smooth to the top because we don't want to get dust all over the house. I glued some sandpaper to different pieces of wood so I'd be able to help make the shapes. And also I wanted to start with some maybe 60 grit and then go on to 220 and even finer. The packing tape around our repair area was probably overkill, but it is the true sign of a do-it-yourself. Make a nice solid bead of the adhesive, but for sure don't miss any spots because you'll have a gap. This is two-part adhesive for solid surface repair. So Google around a little bit and find the color that's best suited to what you have. And watch other videos to make sure you have all the information you need before you start this. We use parchment paper from the pantry and some heavy weights to hold down our patch. Okay, one hour has passed. After one hour, we're taking off our weights. Peeling our parchment paper. Taking off our tape. It's dry to the touch, but it's not hard where it's thicker. At this point, I have put a piece of plastic cutting board over the area, and I'm going to hand sand it to eliminate all the plume of dust that you get with the power sander because it's such a small area. So this is 60 grit, and in theory, when I sand it, I'm not going to scratch up the whole cabinet because I have this 
plastic cutting board. So let's see how this goes. It took about an hour of hand sanding. I use 60 grit, then 100 grit, then 150, then 220, and then finer and finer as I need. The homemade wood blocks just allow you to be more specific where you sand, rather than a big sander sanding the whole area. This whole section will need to be sanded so that it's white as a patch or it can be sanded and feathered out so that the patch virtually disappears but you will always know where it is.